The annual precipitation of Chautauqua County uh, is understood by the farmers of Chautauqua County, but I don't know that the rest of the uh, people of the county appreciate it and what it means to us. I would start out by telling you that records have been kept in a number of places in Chautauqua County. I'm not going to try and list the names of the men and women that have volunteered their time for literally decades uh, to make these records as volunteer observations for the National Weather Service. But uh, our longest records are kept at Fredonia, on the Hard Scrabble Road in the town of Westfield, at Sherman, and Sinclairville, the city of Jamestown, and up in the town of Hanover. In a number of instances, the records are only partially used, or the city of Jamestown records are used, uh, and I have a problem with that because annual precipitation is a very, very sophisticated thing. I can, I can tell you of a two and a half inch, one hour rainstorm that happened in the summer of 1983 up in the Mayville area that was missed by all of the other uh, gauging stations in the county. Uh, it happened to be that my gauging station that I run on my back porch caught that particular instance. Uh, but imagine two and a half inches of rain uh, in an hour's time. It caused tremendous problems of erosion in the streams and tributary to Chautauqua Lake uh, where it struck. Maybe some of you remember the, the flooding of the Chautauqua Mall not long after it was uh, developed. That happened to be a little rain cloud that cried in only one of the tributaries of Chautauqua Lake. Possibly some of you also remember the flood where the road in Panama was washed out and uh, the people down at Snug Harbor had some problems as well as the campgrounds along the Prendergast. Uh, that only affected streams in the western portion of uh, Chautauqua Lake. Very infrequently do we get a weather event that it treats the whole of Chautauqua County in a very similar manner. The only one that I can find record of is Tropical Storm Frederick in the fall of 1979. It's the only tropical storm that has ever passed through Chautauqua County. We had Tropical Storm Agnes in 1972 that uh, decided to die over Allegheny County and we only got the, the fringe benefit of that storm and I'll tell you about those fringe benefits a little bit later. Uh, annual precip. Depending upon where you are in the county, it's different. If you're on the Chautauqua Lake watershed area or in the upland area of Chautauqua County, uh, you're talking about an average annual precipitation of approximately 42 inches. We're talking about a lot of water. Uh, down on the Lake Plain, we're talking about somewhere between uh, 36 and 38 inches along Lake Erie. Each one of those inches of rain is a very, very interesting thing. And I'd like to give you an idea of the energy involved in that rain. Let us assume that you own an acre of land. An acre of land nominally, a surveyor's acre is 66 feet wide and 660 feet long, or one chain by 10 chains. Or in lay language, it, if you make it into a square, it's somewhere between 109 and 110 feet square. That's, I'm sorry, 200 and nine and 210 feet square. So that you end up owning 43,560 square feet in an acre of land. On that acre of land, when you get one inch of rain, you end up with, believe it or not, you end up with 360, I'm sorry, 3,630 cubic feet of water. That uh, turns out to be 27,156 gallons of water when you get a one inch rainfall. Uh, if you convert those gallons of water to pounds, it ends up being 226,621 pounds of water on that acre of land in that one inch rainfall. So just think of the power and the energy that you're involved with now, all of a sudden, you own 
226,621 pounds of water. What are you going to do with it? Well, basically, you don't have a responsibility for it. Mother Nature takes care of that. Uh, depending upon topography and the soils that you encounter, somewhere between 40 and 60 percent of it becomes runoff. And we'll talk about runoff pattern uh, a little bit later. Uh, 1 to 15 percent of it uh, flows into the groundwater uh, and storage. And 25 to 35 percent of it, depending upon the season of the year, returns to the atmosphere. Now realize that when we start measuring rainfall, this is not the dew that settles from a fog or a mist in Chautauqua County on a summer night. This is that quantity of material that falls into a measuring device and that, that, that you can measure. What the dew is and those types of uh, water considerations are, I don't honestly know. One of the things that we have to do is understand the energy that is involved in this water and where it's going to go, particularly that 40 to 60 percent. Uh, I'm going to start by showing you a map that you're going to see several times in following uh, presentations. It's a 1955 soils map of Chautauqua County. And uh, I would hope that we'd be able to get the whole thing on focus in, in one picture or at least have Chautauqua Lake as the, the center of it. All right, this is a soils map that has now been replaced with new soil information, but this soils map helps uh, provide the illustration that I want. You can see Chautauqua Lake in the center of the map. And then you see the gray-blue areas. All of the gray-blue areas are lake-laid or water-laid soils uh, in Chautauqua County. These are also the location of the majority of our flooded areas, and they are also the, the area in which we find the vast majority of wetlands, which is a topic of a tape that we're going to talk about in the not too distant future. But realize that uh, when we talk about an inch of water and we talk about 226,621 pounds of water that you have uh, received in possibly a two-day storm, or a one-day storm, or a four-day weather event. Realize that you get 42 inches of water on average. Now it comes as hail, it comes as sleet, it comes as snow, uh, it comes as a driving rainstorm that just does more than pitter-patter on a roof. It feels like the shingles are coming off sometimes. Other times it is just a gentle pitter-patter. But realize that what you are talking about on your acre of land for a year's average rainfall is 9,518,000 pounds of water. Now realize that I'm talking about average. We have had instances where we have registered in one of the observation stations as little as 28 inches of rain a year, and we've had instances uh, where we have registered over 60 inches of rain a year. Therefore, when we start talking about averages, uh, we're in trouble. We truly are. Uh, one of the things that people often ask is, how much water is in snow? And the easiest way to duck the answer is to say that if you get 10 to 12 inches of snow, you probably have an inch of water. But I have seen 18 inches of snow only packed down uh, to an inch of water. Meltdown, I'm sorry, not packed down. I, I'm thinking about what I did last Thursday, which I went out and, uh, on the 4th of January and measured the snow uh, the snow and its water content. Uh, I've done this traditionally since I came to Chautauqua County because in 1976 I went to Wanda Gustafson and I said, Wanda, we've got so much water in the snowpack we're going to have a flood this spring. It's inevitable. Even with a gentle uh, meltdown, we're going to have too much water going into the Chautauqua Lake uh, system. 
and about a week later the Corps of Engineers came out with a warning that uh, we would probably have flooding in the Chautauqua Lake Basin. Uh, but I do that every year. I have a, a sample site and when I look at that sample site and if that sample site says I've got four inches of water in the snowpack, then I go to Wanda and say we're going to have to sample the 29 stations that I s traditionally sampled uh, for uh, an estimate as to whether or not we're, we're going to have a flood incident on Chautauqua Lake. Realize that the distribution of the 42 inches of rain, if I give you monthly averages, I'm in trouble because I've seen some months that we get 10 inches of rain in a month. True, that was when Tropical Storm Frederick came through, uh, but we've seen 10 inches of rain. Uh, I've seen less than an inch of rain in a month. In fact, I think this last December, believe it or not, was, was one of our lightest uh, precipitations in terms of, uh, I, I think I measured 1.2 inches of, of precip in the month of December, even though we, we had the storms that we had. So when we deal with averages, we're in deep, deep trouble. On average, here we go again, between April in September, which is the basic growing season of Chautauqua County, we get half of the rainfall. This is one of the things that gives us the thousands of acres of pasture and hayfield that we can raise well on the soils of Chautauqua County, particularly in the uplands of the county. Uh, the other half of the precipitation gets distributed in the other half of the year. Uh, I have an illustration up next to the uh, soils map that is a, an illustration of uh, groundwater depletion as it is related to the uh, Jamestown Aquifer and the water supply for the city of Jamestown. If we can focus in on that and, and look at it for a few minutes. Down at the bottom of the scale it goes from January through December. We're not talking about a water year here. And you see that we have areas where we have high stream flow and then all of a sudden we drop down and we have very low stream flow and we begin to de deplete the groundwater. Uh, that very well fits with the pattern of vegetative life in the watershed of the, the Jamestown Aquifer as well as Chautauqua Lake. What it means is that up through April, we don't have much leaf surface or much growing activity taking place in the watershed. And starting in, no, in October and November, we begin to lose that leaf cover. And what happens is that our highest rates of runoff take place from late September, late October, depending upon the year again, uh, into April, and then we begin to see evapotranspiration taking place. And so when I suggest to you the numbers that I suggested to you concerning runoff and groundwater recharge and the uh, evaporation and transpiration that takes place, we realize that they have great seasonality in, in how those percentages work. Uh, great seasonality to the point that I'm not an expert enough to go much further than to to suggest to you that we have, we have problems with that interpretation. Uh, as we deal with seasonality, uh, we deal with the fact that uh, for all practical purposes, the water that we see flowing in streams into the lake during most of the summer is water that has gone into the groundwater system and now is coming out and going into the lake. It's only when we get a sharp rain, like I suggested, uh, where I saw two and a half inches of rain in an hour, that we get a high rate of runoff and erosion uh, during the summer months. The rest of the time, uh, much of the water is taken up. There's one other thing about seasonality that is most important. When I started doing water content studies of the snowpacks of Chautauqua Lake, I found in only into in no pattern, but in very few instances when I drove my snowpack sampler down to ground, I would go right into the ground. The ground was not frozen under the snowpack. 
And in talking with Kurt Bauer and other people about this phenomenon, uh, my conclusion runs something like this, that if we have an early freeze, uh, we may get a frost penetration down as much as 39 inches. In fact, in the building construction trades for Chautauqua County, they suggest that three and a half feet is the, the base of any footer that you're going to put under any building. So no frost is going to get down under that level. But what happens is if we get a snowpack, before we get a freeze, the snowpack becomes a great insulator. And if the ground has frozen somewhat, the temperatures that are there in the ground come up and will melt that frost back up to the snowpack. And therefore, all winter long, you have the snow melting and getting into the groundwater system in a very comfortable, steady, active time. We don't get that come summer because of the acres and acres. Just, just think of an oak tree and the acres and acres of leaves surface that one oak tree can give you and how much moisture it catches and has, gives the opportunity to evaporate and transpirate it back up into the atmosphere. Uh, I had some uh, quotes from Rutherford Platt's This Green World, which is one of the first books that was given to me by a friend so that I could understand plant life. And we're, we're, talking, we're talking about a, a fully mature tree uh, transpiring hundreds and hundreds of gallons of water a day. Uh, I'm not going to give you any quotes because it just gets me into trouble. <laughs> But we're, we're talking about a tree to be able to tr transpire a, 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 an amazing amount of moisture back up into the atmosphere, draw it out of the soils of, of a particular place. If you go into a woodlot this time of year, and the woodlot has been there and is well established, you can dig down and you will get to the, the tilth of the, of the uh, forest with the leaves and everything packed down, and you'll find that water can move down through that very, very, very readily. Most of the municipalities of Chautauqua County depend upon groundwater as a source of their drinking water. Uh, we've got a few uh, places on Chautauqua Lake, like Chautauqua Institution and the Point Chautauqua Development, as well as the condominium development drawing waters from the lake. The city of Dunkirk draws its water from Lake Erie. The municipalities along the lakeshore draw their water from reservoirs. However, the rest of us, some 17 municipalities, draw our groundwater, draw our drinking water and municipal water from the ground. In most instances, these are aquifers. One of the things that puzzled me, and I don't know that I'm correct, but the village of Lakewood major source of water was a well and above it they built the Chautauqua Mall and the uh, complex to the east of the Chautauqua Mall and then they began having trouble with the water supply from that particular well in the village of Lakewood. Whether or not there is any direct connection I have not had the time nor the resources to investigate but I have a sneaking suspicion that when they converted all of that wetland, which is what it was, uh, to what it is today, uh, they may very well have affected the major well that was then supplying the um, village of Lakewood. Realize that today, the village of Lakewood, the village of Faulkner, the town of Ellicott that is on, on public water, the town of Busti that is on public water, and the village of Lakewood all draw a substantial part of their water supply from the Jamestown Aquifer uh, and their well systems that they have uh, in, the, in the town of Ellicott. Uh, all of that is recharged. Uh, if we go back to the uh, map um, of the soils of the Chautauqua County, we can uh, take a, a look at the uh, Jamestown Aquifer as that gray-green area running east of Chautauqua Lake in a northwest to southwest uh, direction. The Jamestown Aquifer rests at a depth of about 
um, 32 feet as it enters the well fields that are t uh, just north of the village of Faulkner. Realize that along the perimeter of that area is the infiltration area for the city of Jamestown aquifer. There is no water coming into Chautauqua County from any dynamic outside source. As I worked in Illinois back before I came to Chautauqua County, we had a river that ran down the, the west central part of uh, the state of Illinois that you could not find in any map. It was called the Mahant River. It was a pre-glacial river. And many of the municipalities along uh, this invisible river went to the river for their water supply, all recharged from surface drainage. That is the case with all of the aquifers in Chautauqua County. They are recharged from waters that are part of the annual precipitation. There is no water flowing from some other place into Chautauqua County with one exception. And that's along the northeastern boundary and Cattaraugus Creek. That's the only place where we have waters coming from outside the county that, that may recharge. Uh, then we can have an interpretation of the Conowango as it flows back into the county uh, in the town of Poland and then courses out of the county uh, in the town of Cayentone. But in terms of underground water movement, the waters of Chautauqua County, those waters or those aquifers are recharged by the annual precipitation. There's something else that I struggle with when we talk about annual precipitation, and that's called lake effect. It can be snow or it can be rain. And uh, for those of you that have driven up and down from Mayville to Jamestown over the last several decades, you, you know that something happens at Stowe and Mother Nature changes the weather station, uh, the weather system, uh, in some years uh, at that point. The reason I say in some years, I have a sneaking suspicion this year that many of our lake effect snowstorms have passed over and been more difficult for the city of Jamestown and its suburbs than they have been for Mayville. But realize that Mayville has, in its own me method of measuring, which I have never sought to, to gauge or understand, uh, they talk about an annual pre, uh, snowfall of about 200 inches. Uh, if we say its snowpack is worth an inch of water for every 10 inches, there's 20 inches of our annual precipitation that comes as, as snowfall. Whether or not that is true or not, uh, nobody has had the time or the resources to, to make uh, a, a conclusive statement. One of the, one of the things in this, this work that I'm involved with in this sharing of information is I don't want to create more myths of Chautauqua County. And the problem is myths of Chautauqua County are based on memories of Chautauqua County. And each of us can see a particular instance happening in an entirely different manner. When I was a scoutmaster, I used to deliberately create an incident during the scout troop meeting and then I would ask the boys to move off into their patrols and describe what they had witnessed. And uh, if I had six patrols, I had six different views. If I had four patrols, I had four different views of, of the incident. So as we deal with the question of annual precipitation and what it does for us, we have this challenge of, of, of dealing with the concept of how do you perceive what is going on. There is another illustration that's up on the easel. It's all the way to the uh, left and upper side of the easel. Uh, it has to do with the incident of, of flooding from the time we started keeping records on Chautauqua Lake uh, to the year 1992, uh, and they can get that in. And what we start with is we start with uh, January, February, March, April, May, on down on the, the left side. And then across is, are the uh, in, number of incidences that take place. And then in each bar you have an illustration of what a particular incident uh, 
meant in terms of flooding around the shores of Chautauqua Lake. Realize that the only place that we have good, and keep this up there for a few moments if you will, Chuck, uh, the only time we uh, have those records is on Chautauqua Lake. We don't have a gauging station other than the Chautauqua Lake gauging and the Dow Street gauge that have run for an extended period of time. And we only really started keeping good records uh, after the turn of the century. In fact, the, the flood of 1913 when the uh, trolley lines were underwater at, at the uh, end of uh, second, well, it's not Second Street, um, Jones and Gifford, uh, that we really began to keep good records on flooding. There were other incidents of flooding, but we don't have a, a good set of records. But you can see there that that most of our flooding takes place in January, February, March, April is a peak, and then it poops down to May and June. And you see the month of August, we haven't had a flood on Chautauqua Lake that got above the uh, delineated uh, flood elevation of 1309 feet above mean sea level. The reason we used that was that for years, the Corps of Engineers, as they dealt with flooding on Chautauqua Lake, use 1309 as the onset of flooding. They have since changed that number uh, to a different number. In terms of the annual precipitation and the question of flooding, realize that it happens in other places than around Chautauqua Lake, but that's where we've, we've kept the best records. Uh, it happens in the Conowango Valley, the Casadega Valley, in the Valley of the French Creek, uh, Finley Lake, and in the Mina area, but that's all the French Creek uh, drainage area. Uh, on the shore of Lake Erie, uh, we had some high water in the early 80s, uh, but we've not had flooding from uh, the lake itself. Uh, we've had flooding from the tributary streams to it. The, the flood incident is dynamically tied uh, with the annual precipitation, the snowpack, and when the vegetation appears and the vegetation becomes part of our armor against flooding. Um, it becomes a, a great instrument in evap transpiration that takes the waters up uh, back into the atmosphere that gives us the next day's rain as the case might be. Uh, the other thing is that if you look at a map of the United States and you look at annual precipitation and annual cloud cover we find that Chautauqua County is a very unique place. It's one of the few places where you shouldn't invest in solar energy systems <laughs> uh, because we do get that much cloud cover because of the weather systems as they come from east to west and from southwest to northeast. Uh, I would invite you to spend more time looking at your daily weather reports uh, and see what is happening when we're on the, the right side or the left side of a low or a high and what type of weather we get. Uh, the reason for that is I want to hook you into my hawking a little bit, uh, a little bit later on uh, in possibly another uh, presentation. But weather systems, of course, these systems are waters that are carried off the Gulf of Mexico. They're waters that are carried off of the Pacific Ocean that we have visit us as part of the rainfall. Our rainfall is acidic. In fact, our rainfall is probably has some of the highest acidic ratings at different times of the year of any place in the United States. Uh, one of the reasons for this might be that we have one of the best collection stations that has been most diligently uh, observed. And this is done by the Chautauqua County Health Department on the top of the county uh, Joseph Jirasi office building. And there's been great record keeping kept there about acid rainfall. And of course, we're downwind from a tremendous uh, industrial complex to our west. Annual precipitation plays a very, very important role in our life. It is also a magnificent illustration of a tremendous amount of energy. Just imagine the Chautauqua Lake watershed of 180.5 square miles. It gets one trillion 99 billion pounds of water in it on an average every day, every year of a century. This gives us our siltation. It gives us the fertility of the lake. It gives us the cleanness 
of the lake. The annual precipitation plays a role in your life and in my life, whether or not you want to acknowledge it. And I 